the 2024 elections. What does this say about the current political landscape in your country? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, for having me. Uh, if I can just paint a picture, you, you have, have a group of political parties, predominantly white, led by a predominantly white ideological trajectory. And um, it's not clear <clears throat> if they have the numbers to have a serious stand come elections, general elections next year. And uh, you gauge that by their past or previous election uh, performances. And uh, if you could just t take one hypothesis, for instance, you take the Freedom Front Plus and uh, the Democratic Alliance, uh, you combine their numbers. They're not near to even 20%. They don't get you to closer to 20%. So <clears throat> this is not to say there's no danger. Uh, especially on the ANC side. Uh, this is to signal that there is discontent. And uh, of course, the opposition will do whatever they have to do to unseat the ANC. But if I may just take it a bit further, uh, what the, what the, uh, the, the, the DA led, I will call it that, the DA led a sort of coalition, uh, what they've mastered is, the, is what I would term a Stockholm syndrome, in the sense that they have made <clears throat> through the utilization or effective utilization of the media to, 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 to propel a particular propaganda, whereby people will have to yearn for, 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 for the days of apartheid, whereby some are beginning to concede to say maybe life was better under that kind of a system, which is not true. And uh, it's a post-colonial era, uh, a sort of a kind of a, a contention. Now, 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 what they have mastered, which I give credit to them, is that they are good planners. They've managed to eat from the ANC from the days of Tabombeki. Uh, if you look at the, the, the graph has been nose diving uh, from, from 70 something during Mandela era, now to President the opposition parties have been eaten into the majority of the ANC. The yes. majority, the majority of the ANC, which is fifty, which is currently sitting at fifty-eight percent. Now, <clears throat> that that doesn't necessarily pose a serious threat. What is worrying though for the ANC, which I think it has to be careful about, is that uh, it, it has to get its house. It, it must clean uh, clean up its uh, its act in order to survive. <clears throat> it's easy to do that. Thank you very much, Mpuzi. I'd like to bring in our second guest, uh, Herman uh, Ogbomaiko in Cape Town into the conversation. Uh, Herman Mpuzi says, you know, uh, the ANC has to get his house in order. Elections are next year. Is there still time uh, to make a difference? And can you elaborate on the motivations behind this opposition party's decision to work more closely together how do they plan to leverage uh, this unity to challenge the ruling African National Congress's position? Well, if you see, uh, historically, the ANC had uh, about 70 percent votes right after 1994, uh, after the democratic dispensation in uh, South Africa. But, uh, you know, recently, even two years ago, the uh, votes have been declining and uh, I mean, it's I mean, uh, in the uh, local elections, I think it was about even uh, a little bit lower, 50%. I'm not saying that uh, the ANC has, uh, so there is also political apathy, especially in the youth. But the motivation behind this is, I mean, uh, these uh, parties, the DA and that others, those uh, six smaller parties believe that the country is misgoverned and uh, there is uh, no rule of law according to them, and there is an issue uh, related to corruption, energy crisis, and uh, a high level of unemployment, about 33%, and the 65% are between uh, 15 to 24 year old. So, um, so there is some sort of leverage based on those premises that I have mentioned so the DA is trying to garner, you know, 
what through this coalition uh, yet uh, you know it it excludes the uh, EFF. EFF. so uh, that is also another challenge for the DA because the DA has got only a little bit higher than 20 percent and uh, EFF the third uh, largest party in South Africa has got about 11 percent so um we'll see what will happen but uh, of course it looks like votes are more de-racialized as we speak people are now not talking about black and white especially the younger generation the post-1994 generation they focus more on uh, employment opportunities service delivery and uh, the rule of law in general in the country so we will see what okay. happens so the ANC will have some challenge in maintaining, uh, garnering more votes as we speak. Thank you very much, uh, Herman. Now back to you, Mpunzi. Uh, Herman did mention the elephant in the room when it comes to opposition politics in South Africa, the third uh, biggest political party uh, with 11% of the votes left out of this opposition coalition. Uh, what was the reason uh, for this, and why is it that the DA and the economic freedom fighters hardly see eye to eye in most decisions? Would it affect the strength of this coalition, and what are the implications? Hello, Mpunzi, are you there? Am okay. I audible enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay, go the, ahead. Of go course, ahead, the, please. The, the, there is no ideological linkage between or ideological nexus between a DA and the EFF. The EFF largely resonates mostly with the young, downtrodden, and, and the poor majority, those who are marginalized largely, and they appeal to those. The DA resembles and represents the privileged ones. Now, you can never, there is just no way, it's imponderable that you'll find them under one roof. What is likely to happen is to have a pact, of what I would term a black pact, between probably PAC, Azapo, EFF, and probably ANC. You can't rule that out because uh, EFF, at the end of the day, are the offsprings of the ANC. Mm. So, so it's just a serious, serious, and maybe an, an unnecessary contradiction. If you look at their pol pro policy propositions vis-a-vis, uh, what, uh, what, what the DA is proposing. For instance, I would like to take it a bit further. The DA is responsible, I mean, is, is leading, is in charge in the Western Cape province. And there's a serious irony there, if you look at the numbers. Uh, the DA has got a population of 18%, and uh, you, have, uh, you, have, uh, you have the colored vote, which is predominantly at the 42% ratio as well as 38% African, uh, 38 Africans. Now you ask yourself, how does an 18% uh, become in charge of these mm -hmm. two margins? It's clear the battlefield is on that 42%. Now, <clears throat> there are emerging hazards for the DA. For instance, the, the, the Patriotic Alliance, which I think is going to eat a lot in that 40, 42%. And, uh, I don't think many people are seeing that coming. It, it is going to happen. And of course, there are borderline uh, called sort of uh, Indian votes and, uh, and, and the black population that want nothing to do with the DA, which may be uh, going towards the, the root of Hem and Mashab. But as things stand, that kind of a percentage that you are seeing in the Western Cape is a scenario or as a, as a hypothesis is likely to occur across the country uh, whereby maybe DA may benefit from the dejected uh, uh, voters of the yes. of, 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 of their colored vote in particular. However, however, there is a there is a there is a there is, a, there is an opportunity, of course, like uh, parties like IFP, 
especially in provinces such as Guazulu Natal, because there's no ideology in IFP. IFP is, flex, is a flexible organization. They will just easily link up with, in fact, I'm told they've already done that with the, uh, with the DA. So the ANC is indeed in trouble in that area. However, the ANC does still, in my view, have a chance to fix its problems. They know what to do. Okay. For instance, uh, they know, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mpuzi. I'd like to bring uh, Herman back into the conversation. Now, Herman, mm -hmm. South Africa is a country uh, that's going through uh, significant challenges uh, like uh, most uh, countries on the continent. Corruption, the energy crisis, load shedding and the struggling economy have fueled discontent with the African National Congress among the population of South Africa. How have these issues rather that the parties one strong support base, uh, looking at the, uh, its time in the struggles, its independence, and how confident are these new coalition parties uh, led by the Democratic Alliance in addressing these concerns? Because at the end of the day, these are the issues that electorates, that will be at the uh, forefront of electorates when they go to the polls. Well, um you know, these issues that you have, this uh, discontent with the issue of corruption and energy crisis has been around for years, actually. But in terms of votes, it's very tricky, you know, even though there are these issues, people have loyalty, you know, historically, you know, coming from the apartheid era, mm -hmm. uh, many uh, South Africans who were from the disadvantaged community, especially the Blacks who were color or Indian, um, they affiliate naturally with the ANC or similar party. Um, so, um, but, uh, you know, uh, this issue has become uh, or reached at the climax level. And uh, people actually are realizing that they wanted to vote actually for a party that will care about employment that will, will care or uh, work against corruption and that uh, also try to bring a solution to the energy crisis or what we call load shedding. So what we will see is very interestingly, we will see how ANC actually will uh, work towards actually uh, attracting more votes in the next uh, few months towards the 2024 20, election. But very also interestingly, this uh, multi coalition party, remember uh, South Africans do not vote the president directly, they vote the party. party. So from this party also, who are they going to elect? If they win, I'm just giving a scenario, who oh, yes. will be the president? That is also another challenge. There might be commonality, to host the ANC, but they have differences historically, inclu including uh, the, I mean, all those smaller parties in general. Uh, so it would be very tricky, uh, but uh, we will see what will happen. The thank you, Herman. Is how that, the uh, ANC thank will, you. Will be made. Yes. Now, Puzi, as we begin to wind down on our conversation this evening, the Democratic Alliance's coalition with six smaller parties has gathered attention. Can you discuss the potential electoral impact of this alliance and how it aligns with the coalition's broader objectives uh, to seek uh, to, to, to unseat the ANC uh, as the leading political party in South Africa? How much of a chance do they have uh, as we inch towards the 2024 general elections? If I can be honest with you, they don't stand a chance because combined, they don't even reach 25 to 30% or 31%. That's a reality. This is not to say there are no problems in the ANC. There are problems in the ANC. ANC has got a credibility problem, especially the top leadership. Nobody can run away from that. The damage they are doing in the institutions of, uh, that, that are supporting democracy, of course, is, 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 is too glaring now. Mm. Uh, the, er the, the erosion of the credibility in the, of those institutions, yes. And then uh, the opposition, they can do, in fact, <clears throat> what we need to, to stress the debate towards is who is behind the opposition. 
Now we know that uh, the West is coming in and out of South Africa in support of this <coughs> uh, uh, idea of unseating the ANC. Maybe the ANC will have to also equate the stakes and have a solid BRICS alignment <coughs> as a catalyst or a springboard for a change on the geopolitical trajectory. They must just come clear on that one. Uh, or maybe if things don't work their way, they can consider the, uh, the Black Pact route as the other option. <coughs> However, this is not to say that the problems the ANC is facing are not in the, in the mountain. For instance, uh, <coughs> issue of, uh, let's take the issue of service delivery, as, as, as Prof in the in CP, CPUT is alluding. I do not know, there, there are monies that are going back to the fiscals that are meant to, 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 to service the people on the ground at the local level. Those monies are coming back. Why? Okay. Because there are no capacity. there's no capacity. And the ANC is placing, its mistake is to place its premium on the numbers <clears throat> that a particular leader brings rather than the content and the capacity of what a particular leader will bring. Exactly. We'll, 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 we'll look at how that pans out. I'd like to have Herman uh, have the last say, if you can, in less than a minute, because we'll fast. Uh, run out of time. Herman, look at her head. What key milestones and challenges uh, should we anticipate as the coalition's efforts progress towards the 2024 elections? Are there any wildcard factors that could significantly impact the outcome? And Puzi has ruled out uh, the chances of the DA and its alliance uh, members. I think this is just a starting point. I don't think the ANC... Uh would lose in 2024, they will see they will still uh, get votes, votes that will put them uh, in the parliament uh, to have a majority seat. Mm. But this is just a beginning, a beginning. And uh, maybe in four years to come after 2024, we'll see some votes declining for the ANC if they don't put their house in order. So this is just a beginning, but uh, I don't think uh, it will have uh, any wider impact in terms of uh, okay. the ANC losing votes. Uh, thank so thank, thank you very much uh, for that, Herman. Uh, I'm afraid we've come to the end of this conversation. I'd like to say thank you to our distinguished uh, guests and uh, resource persons and Punzi Mdekazi, Director of International Relations, Lindue Sisulu. Foundation, joining live from Johannesburg in South Africa. I'd also like to say thank you to Herman Berhane Ogba Michael, a political analyst at Cape Peninsula University of Technology in Cape Town, South Africa. I do appreciate your contribution and your time to the program. Thank you.